Welcome to the revolution of one live stream with TK Coleman. Welcome one, welcome all. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday here live at 12 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesdays and Thursdays, TK's Two Cents, where I take a couple of tweets from the week, I break down a little bit of context, and on Wednesdays, Kamau and I, the revolution will be live stream where we have a special guest. We've got an exciting month coming up. Next week, we're going to have Joel Bine from Crash join us. Joel was a guest on the podcast last year, came into the studio, sat down and talked with us about career advice, about successful living, and we're going to check in with him on updates in his career, and he's going to talk with us about how to crash your own career. Uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. So tune in tomorrow for Kamau and I's discussion with Joel Bine. But today we're going to talk about going beyond politics and breaking the news cycle. So I say let's dive right in with tweet number one. Identify one constructive thing you can believe in besides politics. So easy to find things we can believe in if I leave politics in there. But just one thing. I'm not asking for five. Just one thing. Start representing that thing with the same vigor you bring to politics. You, you're telling me to get politics out of my life? Slow down, slow down. Just asking you to represent that one thing with the same vigor. Identify one constructive thing you can believe in besides politics. Start representing that thing with the same vigor you bring to politics. This is how we change the world. That's how we do it, y'all. A lot of what I talk about can easily be categorized, especially for people that's not really into self-help and personal development. It could be categorized as like cheesy, fluffy, pretty non-controversial, inspirational. But today I'm going to share with you my most controversial belief. It's so controversial that I highly doubt it that you'll ever hear them teach it in the school. So controversial. I doubt if you'll even hear it at a church. So controversial, I doubt it if you'll hear it on the news. You ready for my most controversial belief? Here it goes. Your creative power as an individual is worth far more focus, far more time, energy, and attention than what you will ever give to any politicians combined over the course of your lifetime. If you want to know where the real power is, don't look at the names that show up on the ballots. Look in the mirror at that person, that body that you have to live inside every day, that body that you're in when you wake up in the morning. That's the answer right there. If you're really interested in changing the world beyond fluffy, vague, meaningless abstractions, whether that has to do with poverty, injustice, anything in between or beyond, the best place to look is right there in the realm of how can I take charge of my life? If you are really passionate about making society free, then that means you've got to be passionate about your own greatness. And no, I don't mean you have to be the next Michael Jordan. I simply mean passionate about being committed to becoming the best possible version of yourself. Now, I know, I know this is the most important election ever, right? Like this election's different, right? You know how I know? Because that's what y'all tell me every four years. That's what y'all told me last election. You know, oh, this is the most important one. You know, Trump, Hillary, this is the most important one, man. This election's so different. Then y'all told me that before. Y'all told me that with, with uh, Romney and Obama. Y'all tell me this every time, right? Th this election's so different. And you know what? I don't even want to take that belief away from you. I don't even want to debate that belief. You can have it. I'm not even here to tell you to change how you think about this election. I just want a couple of minutes to talk with you about something that they're not going to talk about on CNN, Fox News, or any other place that you get your news. I want to talk about you. I want to talk about how powerful you are. I want to talk about how scary you are, how scary the things you say and don't say are. I want to talk about how impactful the things that you do and don't do are. Because everybody else is going to be talking about the politicians. But you know what? The day after election day, half of you all who are listening right now, 
you're going to be discouraged. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be sad. You're going to feel really upset with those results. And what I don't want you to do is fall into the trap of treating your creativity as if it's some kind of consolation prize. Well, we didn't get the real victory because the real victory is getting the person that we wanted in office. We didn't get that, but hey, at least we have the silver medal, creativity, ha <laughs> yay. No, creativity is not the silver medal. It's the gold medal. Creativity is not the consolation prize. Creativity is the game. It's the reason why we play the game. It's the only way we win the game. And politics is a reaction to that. No matter who wins, if you know how to make a ruckus with creativity, not with coercion, not with violence, if you know how to make a ruckus with creativity, you can still influence the world in radically different ways that have nothing to do with that one time every so often that you get to show up and do something on the voting booth. And the best, the best part about this is that you get to do this 365 days a year. So when that day comes and you feel disappointed about the election results, don't, don't tell yourself, well, you know, at least we can, you know, do some work in our own communities. At least we can, you know, go to the gym and work out. At least we can make ourselves better in this and that kind of way. No, that's not an at least. That's where the change starts. That's where it happens. And even if you're on the winning side, you know, let, let's say it's the day after election day and you're like, yay, we got the person that we wanted in office or what's more typical, we stopped the person that we didn't want to get in office. We stopped them. Don't be so easily satisfied if you're in that camp. Don't treat it as if the game is already won because you know what? You still got to wake up in the morning and be you. That politician you just elected in office, they are not going to take care of your family. They are not going to fulfill your dreams for you. They're not going to get after it in making you better. You still got to show up and take that responsibility for your life. So don't be so easily satisfied. Whether you think you're on, you're on the winning side or you think you're on the losing side, understand that the power within you is the power that shapes the world. You know, it's amazing to me you know, I'll, I'll use an example. I'll use an example. When I talk about personal development and personal change, the easiest part, the easiest part of personal development is, you know, voting with your dollar. The easiest part is doing something like buying the book. The hard part is actually reading the book and then applying it into your life, right? Everybody knows how to walk into a bookstore, get on Amazon and drop $15 on a book. That's super easy. The number of people who do that versus the number of people that finish the book and then apply it, far more. Easiest thing is to buy the gym membership or buy the exercise equipment. The hard part is actually using it, showing up and using it every day for even six months. That's really hard. Easy thing is buying the diet plan. The hard part is actually following it, right? Easy thing is signing up for the online course, writing the check. The hard part, is actually doing the course and actually following up on what it is you paid for. Voting is kind of like buying the book. It's kind of like buying the gym membership. It's kind of like purchasing the exercise equipment or buying the diet plan. All right, you have signaled to the market what's important to you. You have placed your vote and that ain't the finish line. That is not the end all and be all of your personal power. Your, the end all be all of your personal power is when you actually show up every day for yourself. So I'm not worried about what you're going to do on election day. I'm worried about what are you going to do after and how are you going to see your personal power after? I understand right now, nothing is more important than the election, right? I get it. I've heard this every election. So just play this after the election, because if you're disappointed, then I want you to hear this message and I want you to realize that you still hold within your possession the ultimate source of power. Focus on your individual potential. Focus on the things that you can do to make yourself better, make the people around you better, and that has far greater implications for how you can impact the world. And don't let anyone deceive you 
or mislead you into thinking that you're some kind of lackey, that you're some kind of irrelevant force, that you don't really make a difference and you only count when you show up to a voting booth to check off on a list who you think should be in office. That's, it. That's disrespectful to your potential. You count every day. You matter every day. You can make a difference in your life and the people around you every day. Play this act after election day so you can remember it. And even if you win after election day, if you win, like I said, don't be so easily satisfied. Show up for you. Don't just buy the book, read the book. Don't just show up to the voting booth one day. Show up for yourself. If you can show up for a politician, can't you show up for your own potential? Let's go to tweet number two. Tuesday and Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, TK's two cents. I take a couple of tweets and I'll riff on them for a few minutes. And then on Wednesdays, the revolution will be live streamed. That's when Kamau and I have a special guest. We talk about what's going on in the world. We talk about interesting projects, things along those lines. All right, tweet number two. I just talked about politics. Now I'm about to talk about the news cycle. The 24 hour news cycle doesn't mean you need to have a 24 hour opinion cycle. It's okay to process your observations and experiences before sharing your thoughts. Newsflash, you don't have to release an official personal statement within 10 minutes of every breaking news update. Now that's really hard to remember now. That's really hard to remember because we live at a time where it is very easy to mistake patience for passivity. And a lot of people feel a lot of pressure to show that they stand for the right thing, to signal that they are an ally of the right thing or the right group. But here's the thing, being first or being fast isn't the same thing as being good or being reliable or being right, okay? I would rather have an ally that is slow but sure than an ally that is fast but fake. Some of the most powerful and noble ideas and plans and strategies that have brought much good into the world have been the outcome of patient, meticulous thinking. And if you think that being the first to get on Twitter and to express celebration, enthusiasm, or outrage, or whatever it may be, is a way to change the world, you're doing it wrong. Even if there is an urgent problem, even if there are really things to be stressed out about, and by the way, there always are, there always are, there are more than you can possibly react to, by the way. The news only shows you what has been selected by a particular team for you to focus on, but there are always way more problems to be stressed about, to be mad about, to be worried about than what the news shows you. So if the news shows you, hey, this person is missing, there are way more people than that that are not being reported on. If the news tells you, hey, this person died, there are way more people than that that died that day that are not being reported on. There's always more to be stressed out about, not less. So if you really wanna be consistent, stress out about it all, all the time, right? But here's the thing, here's the thing. Just because a problem is real and a problem is urgent doesn't mean that you're more likely to come up with an awesome solution by rushing to Twitter rushing to Instagram to issue a personal take on it. Now, look, if you have a take that you want to issue, I'm not here to fight against that. I'm not talking to the people that can formulate their thoughts really quickly, that have already thought about these things beforehand, or that do this for a living, or that feel very, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the people out there who are looking around nervous and anxious and feeling like, oh, I got to issue out a statement. You know what? If you need five minutes, you can take five. If you need two days, you can take two days. If you need a week, yeah, you actually have the right to take a week. It's better to give an honest and thoughtful response to things than to give a fast, weak response that might even create more trouble in the long run than just taking your time to think things through. It's time to reclaim the value of going slow and prioritizing substance over sizzle. Hey, but that's all I got to say for today. That's TK's Two Cents. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see y'all tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Peace.